Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Liberty Illuminations. My name is Eleonora, and today we're going to talk about the new moon in Capricorn that is happening on January 12th, with its peak time of 9 p.m. for Pacific Standard Time. Capricorn is a cardinal Earth sign, Saturn ruled as well, so it's a lot about grounding, planning, focused energy um, that we can build upon. Now, the moon is in detriment in Capricorn meaning it's right opposite to the place where it's at home, which is Cancer. So this is not really the best place for the moon to be, but we can use this lunar cycle and this lunation to concentrate upon building emotional sustainability. First of all, we have the moon conjunct Pluto in Capricorn, which Pluto has been in Capricorn for 400 years at this point. This just indicates a powerful and transformative lunation. Conjunct the moon, it just kind of represents our emotions, how we nurture. There can be a heightened sense of intuition or emotional feelings during this time. So it's best to keep a level head and grounded approach to our emotions and goal settings for the next six months. Use the Saturn energy for that. Mercury and Aquarius will square Uranus, retrograde and Taurus. This can indicate new and innovative ways of communicating. Might be disruptive though, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. We might be able to see situations and problems from a different perspective, um, which might come easier than other times. Even though there can be unexpected situations happening regarding Mercury themes such as communications, technology, and thoughts. Venus and Capricorn trines Mars and Uranus and Taurus. And this is supportive of, uh, again, new and unconventional because Uranus, ways to connect with people and build new or build upon existing relationships through grounded and realistic approaches, really. Last but not least, we do have Saturn in Aquarius, square Mars in Taurus. Now, this is a theme that we've been seeing with all 2020, Mars square Saturn, which is the analogy of like one foot on the gas, one foot on brake you're trying to do both at the same time. It's like a push and pull of like, we're trying to get ahead and we're trying to get stuff done, but we're met with these restrictions, with these limitations that might irritate us more than usual. So it definitely indicates frustrations and obstacles, but that doesn't mean that we can't move forward and keep working with the energy that we have available to us. So my one advice is just take it easy. Now we're gonna pull out a card for you guys. As always, this is an energy that we can find support in during this donation while we're setting our intentions or meditating or whatever that is that you do during a new moon. Take advantage that we're out of the club season for a little bit and really think about what goals you want to set for the next six months. Oh, ooh, okay. I got two that just flipped in my hand. So we're going to go with these. We got the second house and we got Leo. Um, I'm going to start with the second house because I feel like Capricorn energy, I feel like Capricorns are always seen as like money-making machines. It's like work, work, work. Um, they're very dedicated and they're very uh, strong-headed. So if you have any goals this donation that you want to set regarding your finances, your values, your value system, your possessions, material possessions. Um, this can be a good time to do that. Take that Saturn energy, like I said, and really like envision your life in six months. What do you want to develop? What do you want to nurture? What do you want to tend to for the next six months with this new moon in Capricorn? That's going to, you know, bring you what you want, bring you the abundance that you want. It doesn't have to be material abundance. It could be emotional. It can be spiritual, whatever you want to do with that. Um, for the Leo energy, I, it's funny. I mean, it's ruled by the sun. This is a new moon. So both the sun and the moon are in the same position. I think we can definitely tap into that creative energy that we have, that passionate, that fire energy inside us. The sun is all about the ego, vitality, what makes us happy, literally the fire inside us. So just also keep in mind with the donation, what's going to bring you joy, what's going to bring you happiness, what's going to really make you feel like, you know, you're here for you and you're here for a reason. I think a lot of people put pressure on like having a purpose in life and I think it's fine just wanting to enjoy life and not really having 
a specific purpose, like, oh, I'm here for this reason. It's like, we're here, we're all here for many, many reasons, not just one. So find the reasons that for you, you want to keep nurturing and you want to keep moving forth with and that really bring you that. I mean, Leos are some of the most supportive people I've ever met. Leos are always the hype man. So find that energy in yourself, be your own hype man this time. For this time, I am going to recommend readings. I haven't recommended readings in so long because we've been in some treacherous uh, terrain with the astrology of 2020, but now that we are out of eclipse season and we have a promising new moon to build sustainable foundations for the future, I really recommend you get a an intuitive reading, a tarot reading, energy reading, oracle reading, any type of reading to get clear on those goals if you aren't yet of what you want to cultivate and nurture for this next lunar cycle. For meditations, we have a meditation on the day of the full moon. It's our channeled meditation in healing for body, mind, and spirit with Travis Taylor that is on January 12th. That's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, if you can't make a live, that's fine. We have 48-hour replays going right after the meditation, so you can enjoy it on your own time for infinite replays during those 48 hours. So you can get tickets on our website, liberateyourself.com. That is it for today, guys. That's all for this new moon. Promising. Take care of yourselves. Take it easy. It's it's an, an it's an interesting mix of dynamics so i i'm curious to see how everybody's feeling it um if you have any questions comments concerns feel free to leave them below or reach out to me directly as always we're here for you you can email us dm us call us at the shop we got you but other than that i'm sending you guys much much love many many blessings and have a happy new moon Readings uh, shared time and space with someone who is spiritually connected. An opportunity to get clarity and reassurance, um, guidance on any area of your life that you may feel stuck or not in flow with. So readings are basically um, extremely helpful for you to make decisions that needed to be made. For having clarity on life's questions, healing, um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots, so when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately, and sometimes it's hard to see that, and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you.